Well, let's get a little bit murkier when it comes to college basketball. Let's get a little bit crazier. Let's get a little bit mad. Yeah. Now that the NFL's over, and now that we can you know, get a little bit more focus on the college basketball, you, you finally arrived. A lot of you have finally woken up. You're finally here. So let me tell you what's been going on lately in college basketball. Let's talk about week 14. You know, real quick before we get to week 15. I know, I know. I usually have a lot of notes, you know, that take up a big chunk of the video anyway. But, I mean, we're going to try and get through these as quick as possible. First off, Virginia. They beat Duke on Monday. You know, or was it Tuesday? I can't remember. I think it was Monday or Tuesday. I can't remember which day it was. I have to check again. But they only made two three-pointers in that game. One of them with the game winner by Reese Beacom. Or at a Reese Beekman, excuse me. I messing up names as usual like they shut down Ben Carroll they shut down AJ Griffin like Virginia was on another level and then later that week you know Duke you know was playing up against Clemson and uh and uh David Collins he didn't have to do that the way they were more like that and like I, I get what he was trying to do I get what Collins was trying to do but it looked like a dirty play and that's why he got suspended the game Clemson anyway got their rabbits whipped. They got whipped by like 18 points. So it is what it is. You know, like, it's that bad. It's that bad, you know, when you do something like that. Like, you can't do that. You can't make a play like that and expect yourself to be like, oh, well, uh, I wasn't doing anything wrong. You, know, you, you did something wrong, my guy. You did something wrong. Whew, boy, we got to talk about the Big 12 because, as usual, the insanity of the Big 12 continues, it continues, it continues, it continues, because Texas, they were physical, they were physical against Kansas, they beat Kansas, you know, in key situations on defense, you know, like Trey Mitchell, Timmy Allen, uh, you know, they, they were all over it, they were all over it, playing very well against Ochai Baji and Jalen Wilson, they were playing very well, they were playing very well, but then, you know, you know, after Texas beat Kansas, they go and lay a goose egg against Baylor. And, um, oh, God, I can't remember the dude's name for Baylor who got injured. But uh, that guy, um, let me look up his name real quick. Hold on. Give me a second. Oh, yeah, Chachoa. I hope I'm saying that name correctly because I'm usually getting names wrong. But he got injured in this game, you know, against Texas for Baylor. And Baylor whipped Texas like... You know, Texas just couldn't do anything offensively. They looked they they looked pretty bad. And, and you know, Kansas on the other hand, they had to survive against OU. And like Jalen Wilson, you know, he did a lot of damage in the second half. I only watched a little bit of that game for the Kansas Oklahoma game. You know, it was like I, I was switching throughout the day on Saturday, you know, and everything like that. Uh, I'm like it was it was crazy. It was a crazy week. Uh, like there's also the fact that Iowa State has, you know, seemingly, but well, we'll talk a little bit more about Iowa State, you know, in a minute. I don't want to get too ahead of myself here. Um, Purdue, they swept Illinois. You know, Ivy went on a tear at, what, 26 points? Just dissecting the Illinois fighting line eye defense. So they, and that's how, you know, the sweep began. Johnny Davis also was on a tear against Michigan State. You know the Badgers were on a they were they were on a slump themselves. You know Michigan State rebounded late. You know rebounded and won like like 15 against Indiana, and then Wisconsin. You know after you know similar to Texas, they had a big victory against Michigan State, but did they lay a goose egg against the mighty Rutgers? Yes, the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. Yes, that Rutgers who also beat Ohio State by the way. Yeah, they also beat Ohio State this week. Yeah, Rutgers, they are on another level. You know, this, you know, like, they continue to beat Big Ten teams, like, highly rated, high talented Big Ten teams. Like, I believe Rutgers is in the top six in the Big Ten right now, if I'm not mistaken. And then you add in Michigan, you add in Michigan, who beat Purdue, like, they blew them out with 12 three pointers and Hunter Dickinson having 22 points as well. But then Michigan goes ahead and loses to Ohio State, so, you know, it kind of cancels itself out. You know, it was just, 
it's just been a weird week, you know. It's been a weird, weird week. And then, you, you know, you also had Umoja Gibson, you know, for Oklahoma. Going back to the Big 12 real quick, like, Texas Tech, you know, they got beat up by Oklahoma. Like, you know, again, they play Kansas tough, but, you know, Umoja Gibson put up 30 on Texas Tech. Like, like I'm just sitting here like, what? What do you mean? What do you mean, man? What are you talking about? And then we go to, you know, the Big East, the third conference that we like to talk about here on this channel a lot. You know, uh, Adama Sonogo, he was on a tear for UConn against Marquette. Marquette's been on a slump lately. You know, Sonogo had 24-15 against the Golden Eagles. And then Marquette also lost to Butler later in the week. You know, I, I don't understand why, but here we are. And then, you know, UConn, you know, for all intents and purposes, we got a classic Big East game earlier today. You know, St. John's, UConn, I was watching that while I was working. Uh, yes, that's why this video was delayed. I was working. Um, you know, like St. John's gave UConn all they could handle in that game today. Like, UConn only made 23 shots in total. They had 15 fouls. 15 plus turnovers. This was rough. It was sloppy. It was a disgusting game to watch. This is the type of ugly college basketball that turns a lot of y'all casuals off. But it was good. It was a good game in UConn. They got what they needed to do. They did what they needed to do, which was win. So we got to talk a little bit about the uh, the smaller guys real quick. We got to talk a little bit about the smaller conferences real quick. You know, like the Pac-12 in which, you know, if you watch the Bill Walton show late Saturday night, which I got to it very late. I think I think it was like after the Golden State Los Angeles game, you know, got to that late and USC outplayed UCLA. Keep in mind that the Bruins were almost able to get that last shot and Johnny Juzank had a three point attempt lined up and it just didn't go in. And like USC they outplayed UCLA in key situations again, similar to how Texas outplay Kansas, you know, in key situations, and that's how they got what they needed to get, you know, um, unfortunately for the Pac-12, there's going to be, there's going to be some problems here, you know, coming up down the line, but we'll talk about that again in a moment here, you know, as we get down to it, but we got to talk about the West Coast Conference real quick, we got to talk about St. Mary's real quick, because they got beat by Santa Clara, and then they got whipped by Gonzaga, that's not a good look right there, you know, Again, I think a lot of people probably have St. Mary's safe right now, but again, I just, I just don't, you know, I just, I'm kind of thinking, you know, hey, this is, this whole WCC four bit thing is kind of falling apart, you know, with the way the WCC has been this year. Keep in mind, West Coast Conference is a good conference. Please stop being a casual and saying that the WCC is bad. It's not. It's a top 10 conference in the country. Not, it's not like top five or anything. But it's definitely a top 10 conference. It's not bad. Um, but then you, you get things like SMU beating Houston, you know, because, yeah, that happened. And, like, Houston, I get it. All their all their best players are gone. I get it. But they proceed to not only lose to Houston, they lost to Penny Hardaway's Memphis squad. Yeah, that Memphis squad. The Memphis squad that's been underachieving all season long. Yeah, that, that team. And now SMU, I believe, is tied for first place in the American. That's how weird it's gotten. That is how weird it has gotten here, you know, when it comes to the Americans. So now, you know, things are getting a little bit more interesting now, you know, for the Americans. Again, you know, we don't know how long, you know, we, we know Houston was playing very well for quite a long time. Again, you know, they had losses by, you know, five points combined before getting beat up by Memphis. And like, watching that game was just rough for the first 10 minutes or so, you know, the Memphis-Houston game, like, watching that game was real rough. So Memphis was shooting all over them. Like, again, you know, the storyline for Memphis coming in was no Amani Bates, you know. But, but it didn't matter. It didn't matter, you know, if that was going to be the factor here. Memphis was doing their thing. They, they played a magnificent game against Houston. Like, Memphis and Houston are going to have another matchup, you know, in the first week of March, the first Saturday in March. So, you know, I'll be, I'll be tuning into that right there um we got some other storylines you know that are conference realignment related and some player personnel related as well this IUPUI yeah you guys only have six players what's going on out there you only have six players you're looking for players to end the season hey hey guys 
and you know you only have one win on the season which is pretty which is pretty sad like that's pretty sad i don't know if it's covid related or anything like that but that's just that's just sad man that's really rough for them i hope they find some other players you know to finish out the season i hope they get some more wins you know the poor guys out there in iupui you know where i forgot that's in indiana i believe but um Speaking of Indiana, Southern Indiana, they'll be moving up from D2 to the Ohio Valley Conference in 2022. And the Sun Belt, while this doesn't really matter that much in basketball, because we don't talk about the Sun Belt in basketball, but this will matter in football come football season. So, you know, we'll talk about, you know, what that means for football in, you know, August. But for now, Old Dominion, Marshall, and Southern Miss, along with James Madison, they'll all be coming in 2022 for the Sun Belt, so you know there's that there, and like I said, I and like I said these um, these recaps take a little bit longer than the actual previews themselves for this week, but we got a we got a weird little week here, you know. We got a nice set of games, you know. There's nothing really you know of note on Monday, I believe, but Tuesday, Wednesday, you know that's gonna be real intriguing, you know. Uh, also, if if you're interested in Thursday, I forgot what's on Thursday, but you know, Tuesday and Wednesday really have the biggest matchups. Again, Kentucky, Tennessee, that is a huge one. Again, Tennessee has a damn good defense. Oscar Shibway and company have been on a tear lately. You know, they've been on a tear. Like Oscar Shibway continues to get double doubles. Everybody else is playing very, very well for the Wildcats. And you know, like this Kentucky team is finding the cohesion at the right time. They're finding what they need at the right time and that is going to be good Villanova Providence this is for the Big East right here like this is really you know this is the matchup for the Big East right here Providence has a, like a they have like a half a game lead or something like that you know because they played less games but we know Providence ain't no slouch they, they had a close call against DePaul Villanova had to beat Seton Hall in which we finally, finally get to see Gus Johnson call a game you know you know, he called both the uh, the UConn St. John's game and the Villanova Seton Hall game. Good for him, man, because he should be calling games. Like, it shouldn't take until February for this man to be calling games. I want to see that man on some college basketball. That's neither here nor there. But Villanova Providence is going to be huge, huge game here midweek, you know, because, you know, Providence – Providence is going to need this win. Villanova's going to need this win. Villanova's had one of the toughest schedules in the country. A lot of people are saying, you know, oh, Providence has been tested. Well, this is a big test for them. You know, this is a huge one. And then you got Wednesday, you know, Baylor, Texas Tech. I'm not sure if this is going to be a top 10 matchup anymore. I'm, I'll say it's like a top 15, you know, because Texas Tech ain't no slouch. We know this. We know this, baby. We know this. Texas Tech ain't no slouch. Uh, there's also Illinois Rutgers. Illinois. You gotta be wary of Rutgers. You gotta be wary of them. You gotta be real, real wary of this Rutgers team because again, Rutgers can beat you. We know, we know Rutgers can beat teams, man. That's how wild the Big Ten has been. And then you, know, then you got Saturday, 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 Saturday. Oh boy, oh boy. Let me tell you, I was not expecting this kind of lineup for Saturday, but it's actually really, really fun looking. You know, you've got Illinois, Michigan State. Now, there was some time swaps and stuff like that because of, you know, canceled games and stuff like that. So, Illinois, Michigan State was originally supposed to be like early afternoon, you know, like 1.30ish, but now it's at uh, noon Eastern. So, that's going to be real intriguing there. You've got Xavier, UConn, Texas, Texas Tech. You know, the second matchup between Texas and Texas Tech. The first matchup was wild two weeks ago. And this week, you know, this matchup, this Saturday morning on ABC, it's going to be a real wild one as well. I can tell you that much right now. In the afternoon on Saturday, you've got Iowa, Ohio State. Again, you know, Kiki Murray and company, they've been playing some pretty good basketball. And Ohio State, you know, it's a team I'm kind of, you know, I think they're safe. But again, it's just a team, you know, at times where it's like, uh, I don't know. I don't know sometimes. And then my alma mater. Yes, my alma mater. Uh, some of y'all are also on this channel, are also alma mater, you know, are also an alma mater at this school, UT. Yeah, North Texas Mean Green. We will be watching, uh, at least me, I will be watching my North Texas Mean Green take on UAB, or rather UAB, not UNB, UAB, because this Conference USA is looking kind of spicy. Yeah, UAB and North Texas are on the bubble line. 
you know, they're both teams that are on the bubble line, looking pretty good, but looking pretty sharp. And then you got Florida State Duke, you know, um, in like that that mid, you know, like that late afternoon type game, you know. So that's going to be really intriguing again. I think Rutgers is a team that's probably wrapped up a bit. If they can get one or two more good victories like this, you know, they've wrapped up a bit in all intents and purposes. The AAC, I think the storyline here is, is there going to be a bid stealer from some other conference like the Missouri Valley, you know, or the OVC, you know, you know, team conferences from those, you know, some, somebody, some of these other conferences looking for a second team to maybe sneak in. But the AAC, you know, has Houston is, is a lock. But what I'm saying is, is teams like SMU and Memphis are teams like those going to be able to knock Houston off again to where, you know, it, whether it be in the regular season or whether it be in the AAC tournament, are those teams going to be able to make it more interesting for, you know, at large bids and stuff like that? Because we know Houston is a lock, in, in all honesty. Like, we know that. But again, like I'm saying, the AAC might have a bid stealer in its ranks. And the Big East... It's wild. Like, Villanova and Providence are at the top, but do not, do not take the Big East lightly. It has been a wild conference this year. Definitely a conference that has been, you know, a lot more, you know, than the Villanova conference, you know, like it has been over the past decade or so, or at least close to a decade. Because, I mean, I swear Villanova's been dominating the Big East for a decade now, and it's just been kind of boring. But this year... That's why we've been talking about the Big East so much because it's so fun. It's so wild. It's so like the chaotic Big East, you know, back in the day. It's like that now. And who wants to be a number one seed? We have all sorts of different contenders for a number one seed. you got your Gonzagas who a lot of people are going to cement as a number one seed. Personally, I would put them as a number one seed, you know, just to be spiteful because, you know, it's Gonzaga and, you know, you know, I mean, they've proven themselves on and off the court. You know, you know, they, they haven't had the national championship yet. That's why we haven't really been talking about Gonzaga because, again, you know, they just do what they do best, which is win games in their conference. You know, you can't fault their conference, like I said. You know, and again, I keep saying the WCC is not a bad conference. It's just teams in the conference. You know, the bottom feeders really drag the conference down, and the top teams, you know, continue to lose to the bottom feeders, you know. So, you know, it's stuff like that that keeps, you know, me from talking about Gonzaga a little bit more, you know. So I wonder which Big Ten team wants to be a number one seed. I, I think Arizona is a number one seed. They have a three-game lead in the Pac-12 right now. Kentucky, you know, despite the fact that they're, you know, they're, they're, they've had some games this year where they've looked kind of bad, I think this is a team that is definitely in position for a number one seed. I don't think Kansas is the number one seed, though. Like, they have too many of these games like this. They've had too many of these games in conference play where they play way too close, and it's starting to bite them in the ass. Like, it's starting to bite them. That's why they lost to Texas. That's why they've lost, you know, you know, some of these games. But, I mean, again, you know, beating Baylor like that, you know, last week, you know, is going to help their cause a little bit. I think this is – I think that Kansas team is a two right now, two seed. Auburn's number one. Uh, Auburn's the number one seed. You know, in my opinion, yeah, they had a bad loss against Arkansas as well. Yeah, they had they had a bad loss against Arkansas. You know, not 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 saying that Arkansas is bad or anything, but again, a lot of people weren't rating Arkansas really highly or anything like that. You know, you get what I'm saying. Um, so yeah, you know, the number one seed situation is going to be weird. And I, and again, like I said, I wonder which Big Ten team wants to be a number one seed. Is it going to be Illinois? Is it going to be Purdue? Is it going to be Michigan State? Is it going to be Wisconsin? You know, I wonder. And then the bubble is wild. The bubble is very, very wild this year, as usual. It's starting to get a little bit more crazy because Iowa State was doing so well. They were doing so well at the beginning of the season. Now they've completely gone off the rails. Oklahoma is another team that's pretty inconsistent. They've also gone off the rails. Wake Forest is a team that's was looking pretty nice, but now they're not. Michigan as well. They have a game against Wisconsin on Sunday that I'll be looking into because I need something to watch on Sunday because I don't want to be bored on Sunday. And then, you know, Oregon, who plays against Arizona, college game day will be, you know, at that game, you know, early in the afternoon, and that game will be played late at night. 
and I'll try and see if I I'll, I think I'm gonna watch it, but I mean I don't know for how long because again, you know, Oregon's one of those teams that has been moving in the wrong direction because they lost to Cal on Saturday, and you can't do that. You cannot do that. Like you cannot lose these types of games. So the bubble is wild again. Like I said, there were teams from smaller conferences that are also getting. You know, some high praise. Again, like I said, North Texas UAB, that is a big one right there. If you're looking into that, make sure you pay attention this week. You know, we got a lot of college basketball coming. You know, I didn't go over, like, a whole bunch of games and everything like that. I went over, like, at least 10, you know, here that I think are pretty intriguing for this week. So, you know, your mileage may vary, you know, when it comes to where you want to watch some college basketball this week as we head closer and closer to March. The hunger, the drive, the madness is coming. And I cannot wait to break it all down once again because we're coming back on Sunday, next Sunday, to wrap up another wild week, you know, and we'll do week 15 as usual, come back, you know, recap, you know, week 15, and then do week 16. For the most part this week, you won't be seeing me here. You will not be seeing me. You will be seeing nothing from here you'll be we'll be back here on the channel on february the 18th i believe so we can update y'all about the nba where i think nba stands as we head into the all-star break so that's really the, that's the only thing i have planned i hope all of y'all enjoyed this week of college basketball if you indeed watched it and if you didn't get to it because it's time it's time to start talking college basketball the what the next two months or you know, rather the next month and a half, really. Not two months, a month and a half. It's going to be wild, man. It's going to be wild. So let's get to it. Let's break it all down. And let's ride into the sunset. Good night. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good whatever. Whatever you want to say, you know, whenever you're watching. And remember, as always, to like, share, comment, subscribe, click the notification bell. Do whatever you need to do to get down on to the channel for more and we might be adding some more videos here you know late so I don't know I'm, I'm trying to see there's some other things but we'll talk about that more you know in two weeks when we get to our channel update so again good night everybody take care and I'll see you again later this week with the NBA all-star break video take care big boy sports signing out